Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Thursday morning trading session. Um, oh, screen share. Almost forgot. Just a moment. All right. So yesterday, what a what a crazy day yesterday. The market recovering pretty much everything that it gave up the day before. So we've seen a lot more volatility come into the marketplace now. And it looks as though some of that volatility continued through the night as well. And now we are left with an opening gap to the upside for a change. All the gaps have been below us of late. Here is yesterday's session and you can see just a buyer's market all day long, right into the close, a little bit quiet through the Asian session and then topping out and reversing through the European session. All right, we'll put that on the shelf. I'll try not to do anything silly today. Oh, Andre, it's down a couple hundred dollars so far, he says. Uh, it's kind of a, like I say, a crazy kind of day, but the volatility is welcome. I would rather have the market a little bit more on the volatile side than not. So long as it doesn't get so crazy that I can't get in and out of a position. But that's not likely to happen, at least not on the uh, NASDAQ. All right, so for you Eagle traders, here is our first in sync Eagle signal of the day. I'm a little bit late on that one, so I'm gonna have to let it pass. looking like it's going to be a little bit more bearish today. Trade Forecaster says we are in swing mode for about a half an hour, after which time we are going to be moving into scalp mode. Oh, goody. Oh, they're falling off nicely, though. Looks like we're going to make that first target on the Eagle. I'm going to just give them a couple of minutes here. feel better trading if I have a little bit more structure, if I have a de half decent setup that I can take advantage of. Let's take a look here at the Raptor. I know there's quite a few Raptor traders in the room this morning. Uh, nice little hard edge bounce here right on the opening bell and that too falling off very well. So the number three signal is a continuation signal you need to remember. And so you have to have something to continue. Right? It's not going to develop out of chop. So once you have a trend established, if the market comes and gives a number three signal, that's the hard edge bounce. When prices retreat to the hard edge, we anticipate some sort of reaction. And we got one right there. A dandy one at that. Just great follow through.
about five, six minutes into the session. And funny enough, this is usually when we get some sort of signal, an early signal. Let's see if that holds true today. Right now, the market definitely uh, with a bearish feel to it. Uh, you know, when the market seems to be moving one way or the other, it's so tempting just to hop in so that you can be in the market. Uh, problem is, I really, really, really would have to cover this trade way up here somewhere around 57.60. Because that's the top of the opening range gap. So if I short down here at 5710, that's a 50 point stop. That's out of my my reach. Better to wait for a, perhaps a little bit of a pullback. Maybe we'll get a counter trend signal here that we might try. See if the market gets into that opening gap this morning, at least a little bit. It might be enough in there that we can take a little bit of profit. All right, so here's the beginnings of a counter trend signal. Um, that would be the number two signal. So we've got a very wide band. That's good. We've got a market that's obviously been in a downtrend, and now we've just seen a very small test of the extreme. Are they going to give me a buy signal? Uh, the falcon here starting to turn over on the trend line. Uh, the hawk, kind of a mixed bag of signals there. Oops, let's go back here to the Raptor. All right, Aspen's asking, Eric, when you have a chance, please show how you put a target along with a stop on one contract. Okay, so here's the uh, counter trend signal. One contract, I'm gonna go to manual mode. My target is preset down here with the 20 ticks. This is tick targets enabled. If I wanted to set a target manually, which I can do as well, I'll show you here. Click on this tab, and now you can set your trade, you can set your profit objective wherever you want. If you want to restrict it to a single contract, Go to manual mode and just make sure that quantity is set at zero. But your profit objectives will always default to these values down here. For instance, here on the Falcon, I'm set up 100% at target one, so all in, all out, and target one is set at 20 ticks. But like I said, you can also set your targets manually or you can simply preset them. Now it's oh so tempting to try to run this trade out and it may actually get some legs to it, but I think I'll just take my profit if they give it to me. Excuse me.
Well, they're trying. Let's see if... Oh, they're going to try to push for a bigger test, a retest of the low. Oh, you guys, get away from there. Oh, now my fear is that they're just going to tap the low and stop me out and then reverse and head higher. Asma says, I tried to click setting price. It only puts stop and no target. Please go slowly. It takes time to capture your move. Okay. So first, I'm going to change this to 100%. We're going to be all in, all out at 20 ticks right there. Okay. Okay. I've set the trade in manual mode. I'm going to be trading one contract. Click set prices. Set your entry. Click again for your stop loss. And you should get a profit objective. 20 ticks away. The key is to have to make sure that you're you have something in your target one box. If target one is set at zero, for instance, you're not going to get a a profit objective because 100% of my trade is in the runner position. That's what the R stands for. So you want to make sure you, you are all in, all out, or, or have something there. Whether it's a 50-50 split or all in, all out, doesn't matter. And then you need to set your your profit target for target one. Okay, so the sellers uh, not letting up and so much for not doing anything stupid this morning. Oh well, at least it wasn't a huge loss. See what I mean about just, uh, it's so tempting just to hop on board. The market's in a uh, free fall, it seems. But 
but here's a thing to bear in mind uh, if the market makes a really fast move like if for instance we see here now the market just explode five six seven bars lower just like this boom 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 everybody is going to be reaching for their sell market button and that's the time you should be hitting the buy market button <laughs> because dollars to donuts the uh, market is going to make a reversal from that kind of move Okay, it looks like they're going to give it another go to move higher. Oh, do I want to try that again? Well, mother always said I was a slow learner, so here we go. I'm looking now for uh, perhaps another test of the low, another failure. The wide band here is very attractive from the oversold state. When the band gets very, very wide, the market is, gets quite oversold. If we had a oscillating type indicator on here, maybe something like a stochastic or RSI, uh, I guarantee you the indicator would be in an oversold condition right now. A reminder as well, while I have a few of you in the room here this morning, uh, tomorrow is going to be our last trading day for a week. We're going to take the first week of July off. The Independence Day holiday falling on Tuesday is just going to make a mess of Monday session and kind of messes up. Wednesday session because everybody's hung over. All right, so here we go again. We've got a number two signal. We've got a counter trend opportunity. This one I'm going to try to run out because I've got to try to make up a couple of dollars after my last little fiasco. Oh, don't you come back with yet another hard edge bounce, you scoundrels, you. <laughs> Tony says when I go on vacation, he has to go see his analyst. I don't think it's quite that bad. Um... Paul asked, would you consider 5,700 as a resistance? Well, yes, but no. You see, the thing with resistance, if you expect the market to go up, resistance doesn't count, right? If, if I believe that the market conditions have changed and that now we are going to be more bullish, 
Well, now I'm only interested in support. I'm only interested in support holding because resistance has to give way if the market is going to be in an uptrend. Why do I think the market is going to be in an uptrend this time versus this signal here? Well, this signal, I don't know. I wasn't thinking clearly yet. It was too early in the session. I wasn't fully awake. Let's see what other excuses can I come up with. My uh, shoes are too tight, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but the market will have a tendency to allow two moves against the position. So let's say, for instance, you're a buyer. Well, here, right out of the gate, the sellers come make a strong move lower, and then they double down, and they make another monster move lower. Well, that's two moves to the downside. The, seller, the buyers tried to push here. They're going to be more serious on their next attempt. Whether this attempt is going to have greater follow through or not, it's a little bit too early to tell. But um, no, I don't simply avoid a trade because it's at, you know, a number like 5,700. It is a resistance area. You are correct with that. was kind of an area of influence yesterday as well. Now I'm being a little bit aggressive on this, no doubt. The market, you know, showing me it's in a downtrend, but somewhere through here, we are going to see the buyers push back. I'm not sure how hard they're going to be able to push. This little swing here is important. I do need to see a recovery. And now I've got that with trend signal again. <laughs> this is probably the easier signal to take, the with trend signal. And they're going to keep spanking me until I learn not to do the counter trend. Counter trend signals always, always more risky. You're anticipating something that hasn't happened yet. At least the with trend signal, that's the number three signal, we know we have a trend, right? We know there's a downtrend. Ooh, they are going to hit me again. You stinkers. Well, if I do manage to nurse this one a little bit higher, it will be one of my luckier trades. <laughs> Steve says, just do the opposite of me. Currently, I'm short. <laughs> well, it's, it's the... Um, the swing mode as well, right? We're only in swing mode for about another 10 minutes. Then we're into scalp mode. We can already see evidence of a scalping environment. And when we're scalping, I should be taking profit on target. Just because we are more likely to see a lot more choppiness, less follow through. This swing up here, the big one, looking like it's around 57.05, a breach above 57.05 could give me a little bit of room, 57.10, 57.16, likely targets for that. 
and a very ambitious move. Well, back to the high of the morning, 57.33. And then after that, we're into the morning gap. 57.43 three quarters is the primary support. 57.71, the median line. That would be a monster recovery by the buyers. Nobody would be messing with the buyers after that. All right, so here we are, back to the hard edge, which is our intended target for a counter trend position. But like I said, I'm getting a little cutesy with this one. Sellers trying to load up again. You can see them trying to knock prices down. The overall market trend, like if you step back, you look at the daily chart, in spite of the recent correction or two, the overall trend is still up. So the buyers will not go quietly. All right, I thought I saw 57.05 tick there. Come on, hit it again. I dare you. Fifty-seven oh five half is the number I need. Actually, fifty-seven oh five three quarters. So we got a couple of ticks. Got to get a couple ticks above this high. Start flushing out some of the sellers. Oh man. This is scalp mode though. This is what the market is like in scalp mode. It's all over the map. All right, another counter trend signal, another number two signal developing here. We've got kind of the retest. It may not print uh, with the pre-signal warning, but visually you can see we're coming out of a downtrend. There's a retest of the low, possible failure. It hasn't printed just yet. Got the warning dots and the triangle hash mark, but it has not engaged quite yet. Oh, and <laughs> actually getting a cloud crossover signal to the short side. So the bears trying hard to keep control of the market and the bulls trying equally hard to sway things their way. Hey, way to go, Steve. Steven says, okay, I just had a winner on my YM short. That's the mini Dow for those of you unfamiliar with the YM. 
but previously I had like five losers in a row. Uh, <laughs> that's a turning point, Steve. Look at the right side. So you can see we're getting lots of yellow bars here, lots of overlap. Just signs of uh, congestion. Yeah, I'd really like to see a run here at 57.05 half, 57.05 three quarters, or even 57.06 is the number I would like to see. And then maybe, just maybe, we'll see a little bit of follow through. All right. Sometimes it helps if you hold your breath. <gasps> At least it used to work when I was a kid. <sighs> okay, can't hold my breath as long as I used to. This resistance area, make a note of that number 5705 is going to be a trouble spot. In the future. A number to pay attention to. Come on, buyers, where'd you go? Next run to 57.05, I may be inclined to push the trade to break even. If they give me another run to 57.05, here they come again. Yeah, I had a feeling that this third turn here was going to be problematic. And sure enough, all right, so we're getting a crossover sell. May as well try one with the trend. What do we think? Here too, but I've got a little bit of ground to try to make up, so I'm going to delete my profit objective.
Oh, sure. Now they're going to try to put it in the bottom again. Vic asking, am I correct in thinking that one is not required when using the Raptor? Okay, you mistyped a few things here. I think you're asking, required to have the direction of the trade match with the color of the setup bar. Yes, that's that's correct. So almost always you will get a sell signal on red bars and you will get buy signals on the blue bars. The filter, um, not quite as important to have in sync when that develops. Of course, it's always nice to have everything in sync but it's not a deal breaker. And now everything's slowing down. Ooh, scout mode for the rest of the morning. An hour in scout mode. Then we're moving into swing mode. Oh, goody. The Raptor as well, you can, you can take signals on yellow bars. The Hawk, I won't take signals on yellow bars unless it's a four arrow consolidation. But the Raptor, a little bit more forgiving that way. So you can see we're playing here now off secondary support. The market broke through, testing it from the other side. Big fat bar developing here, so we are getting a fair amount of uh, trading come through here. <laughs> That's okay, Vic. Vic says, FYI, I sent an email to Adam regarding the Raptor manual. Lo siento. No problemo, my friend. It is a tough grind today, though, in spite of the quick moves. You know, we've seen a very pronounced moves to the short side. It has been tough slogging this morning for me.
Okay, they're making me nervous again. I'm starting to feel like you, Steve. <laughs> I, I buy, the market goes down. I sell. Now, all of a sudden, what happened to all the sellers? Oh, there we go. Okay, all I had to do was wind a little bit. There they are. Tony asks, Eric, just curious, how often do you time sync your computer? Uh, I think I did it when I set up the clock five years ago. <laughs> um, I, I never do it, but I do think it is on a uh, an auto sync that it keeps pinging some atomic clock somewhere. Well, what do you think? Do I take the chance and roll the trade to break even? Or do I do the smart thing and actually take profit? Ooh, wouldn't that be a novelty, doing the smart thing? All right, well, let's take the trade to break even. And let me see what parabolics look like. All right, there's parabolics. I will go with the parabolic mode and try to protect at least a little bit of this open profit. says take the profit you're probably right mark okay well there we go that helps a little bit Piotr asks, good morning, Eric. Well, good morning, Piotr. I still have a previous version of Trade Manager. Is there any chance to upgrade to the new version? And am I able to do it without taking on more cost as I am an old customer? Yes, of course. Contact Ben as an indicator warehouse customer. You get free upgrades for life. So... Yes, uh, contact Ben, and I'm sure you have his email, or Adam, email Adam, and uh, just let him know that you would like the, the latest release of Trade Manager. Uh, they, by the way, they're... Uh, except for the cosmetic upgrade that we've done here to Trade Manager. Well, I guess there have been a few changes. We brought back the bid ask bar, kind of shuffled these around, uh, reorganized some of the buttons. Uh, the functionality of the tool remains the same, of course. There have been a zero upgrades to the DTS system. I'm quite proud to say we got that one right, right out of the box. And the, the Raptor 
2.0, of course, is with the signal prompts. But other than that, the programming is the same. Oh, and now they are going to tempt me once more with another counter trend signal. Oh, I'm so weak. going to try to be really good this time. I'm not going to say I won't take another counter trend signal. I'm sorry. I can't promise that. But I'm going to wait for a really solid bottom before I try to buy again. getting back toward this 5660 neighborhood which has been a significant level it was near yesterday's lows near Tuesday's lows so that's a big number for this market and it looks as though we're trying to flinch one more time Juicy little number two signal. The clouds starting to intertwine a little bit. Oh, it's so tempting. Oh, I can't help myself. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> So and so, you better not stop this time. Get up there. at it. Dare I run this trade out further? <laughs> All right. They say God hates a coward, but I'm pretty sure he's not fond of stupid people either, so I'm taking my chances.
right. So I would have hit the break even trigger just kissing the profit target or what would have been my profit target at 56.87. And looks like they would have tagged me at break even, so now it will go higher. Not a lot of interest here from the buyers. Where did they go? Come on. <laughs> yeah, Russell. Russell says, I admire your persistence. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't feel like persistence. Yep, here they go. Testing the extreme again, but of course it is. Still in a downtrend.
Okay, well, I might have actually found myself on the right side of this trade for a change. Got to take out this swing high though and get above the hard edge. It is about an hour into the session. 10.30, 7.30 on the west is if the market has had a defined trend, which obviously we have had this morning, is when the market may be inclined to make a reversal. Now I'm hoping beyond hope that I can ride out this last swing. And then I can take the trade to break even and maybe even a little bit higher. Okay. So somewhere through here, there's going to be a little bit of a pullback because we're going to try to work a cloud crossover signal. Scoundrels, come on, get up there. All right, we'll take it to uh, break even. No, they're going to try to knock me out again.
see what I should have done is just take the profit. The market is, you know, it's in scalp mode. It's not going to give me the follow through. No matter how badly I want it to. Well, they are reluctant, aren't they? Bouncing all over the place here this morning. Go away. <laughs> Well, at least I didn't take a, uh, a hit on this one. Managed a very meager profit. Would have done better had I just taken my profit when I had it, but that's a note for the trading journal. Big star beside that one. I wonder if they're going to try a cloud crossover now. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Tony says, my hat's off to you. Job did not have your patience. put up with a lot, but he didn't have to put up with a market like this. 
Oh, Russell says we got a possible rule of three signal on the eagle, and right you are, Russell. Good eye. So we've got a, a rule of three signal as a counter trend signal here on the eagle. We've got a, a trading band. We keep producing signals against the hard edge. So the band should be producing sell signals. We are producing buy signals. The rule of three signal, as with all counter trend signals, it's important that we see a test of the extreme. And I think I think you could make a case for that. I could I think you can make a case for a test of the extreme here. And um, I would probably set it up to buy a break of the high. A little rich, but there it is all the same. Now we're going to get a probably a follow-up signal on the Raptor as well. So the Raptor traders don't need to worry that you're going to be left out. You won't. Probably you can see we're working a possible cloud crossover. We're hitting our head here on the low of the morning, which is why I figured it would be better to enter above that little swing high on the eagle. Let's see if we're going to get one here. Technically, this is a first micro macro cross now on the Hawk. So things looking a little bit more bullish here as well. But overall, the market really, really um, kind of bent. <laughs> All right, you might interpret this as an early cloud crossover. It's really kind of subject to your own interpretation. The clouds were crossing. We've had a little bit of a pullback. Uh, we will also get a proper cloud crossover, so the market kind of moving higher now. We should get a little bit of a pullback through here and perhaps another oh, number one signal or a better looking number one signal. The eagle signal here doing not too bad. Thanks for picking up on that one, Russell.
So had I taken the signal here on the hash mark, I think, oh, look at that, would have hit the profit target already. Well, I'm afraid I don't have the nerve to ride out another loser, so I'm going to bring that to break even, hope for the best, hope that they don't pull back too deep. Back now to the Raptor, where we waiting for that number one signal to print. Well, we had a warning dot, but not much to follow. Not yet, anyway. We'll see. Obviously, I'm hoping we don't see a deeper retrace than this. We're back at 5,700. 5,705 was a real stumbling block before.
All right, so we've got the cloud crossover signal now. I am looking for a second push on the entry. And hopefully we'll get a little bit of follow through on this. Doggone it, if we're not seeing yet another retest. Uh, of course, it's problematic uh, being in a downtrend. I think I'm going to look at a more aggressive stop. Maybe not that one. Maybe not that one. Order, order, cancel. Because here come the sellers again. Come on, get up there. Give me that little swing. Peter asks, Eric, is there any way on Ninja Trader to put three different charts on one window at the same time? For example, the DAX, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. Uh, just a second. I think when you build a chart, you can. So if you're, hold on a second, we'll do it this way. So if you go to your file and you go new chart, I do believe that you can do, um, like let's say you wanted the E-mini and, where is it, the NASDAQ and say crude oil. Uh, these are currently set for daily, but I'm pretty sure it works for the other settings as well. Okay, here, let's do it without a template then. I do believe you will end up with a chart that looks something like this. You've got to turn off the, uh, in the data series, you need to turn
turn off. Oh, it is off. Do not plot. Okay, I'm not sure entirely why it's plotting these executions here, but you can um, you can do that. I don't think you can set a trade manager for each, but if you just wanted to have an overview, then you can pl plot it all on one window. Otherwise, you need to make a separate chart for each market and just resize it as I have done here. Did I hit the profit target? No, of course not. Why would they? Why would they hit the profit target? After scalp mode, we're back into swing mode, so things not looking much better. For the near future. I do expect the sellers to uh, recover the trend here. What I'm hoping for is one more push higher, but I don't think I'm going to get it. It's just the way the day has been. Things kind of grinding to a halt here. It is not uncommon to see a retrace in, during a trend change as the market tries to fight for direction. But it's going to take a little bit to try to nurse this trade higher. And it looks like I might get a swing here and a chance to take a little bit of risk out of this trade. 
in the meantime, I think we're going to close up shop here for the day, and we'll be back again tomorrow. And um, to close out the week, and as I said, we're going to take the first week of July off. So I'll see you again tomorrow morning. We'll talk to you then. Bye for now.